Hey everyone, it's Bilar, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about XP breakpoints in Act 1 to make sure that you manage your XP well enough to find a balance between getting the appropriate amount of levels while not overkilling and thus wasting time as you complete Act 1. So, one thing to keep in mind right off the bat when we're talking about XP is the rule which is as follows. Um, you get 100% XP by default with your, when you're within three levels of the zone level that you are in from the monsters. Um, so zone level, you can just sort of see um, when you mouse over uh, here, you'll see monster level two, monster level five, monster level six. Now this safe zone for XP scales. So every 16 levels, you gain a, another level of wiggle room. So at level 16, instead of being within three levels, uh, plus or minus sort of of the zone level to get 100% XP, it will be plus four. So every 16 levels, it will do it. For Act 1, this isn't super relevant because you're pretty much always going to be within three levels of the zone level in Act 1. It's actually really hard to be under that if you've really been killing at all. You can be pretty well under that if you're just, you know, skipping all the mobs and trying to rush Mervale as fast as possible. But otherwise... In most normal circumstances, you will be pretty good on sort of the XP safe zone uh, in terms of completing Act 1. So uh, as the rule of thumb, then, typically in speedruns, we want to be on the lower edge of that sort of safe zone. In Act 1, that's not going to be quite the case because the level, like the difference in how much XP you need from level to level is still pretty narrow. Um, so you're able to level up pretty much the quickest you can in campaign during Act 1. Um, so with that in mind, we instead want to maybe focus on some XP breakpoints that we want to hit to make sure we're getting appropriate power level at certain points within the act and to make sure we're set up for the following acts because what will happen if you don't have good xp management in act one act two act three and any act really is that eventually under xp will catch up to you and your character will be way weaker than it should be because you're missing a lot of passive points you're missing a lot of like extra life and you just keep falling further and further and further behind as you progress through the game because you get further and further and further outside of that XP safe zone that I mentioned earlier. On the other hand, we have the issue of making sure you don't overkill because getting XP has diminishing returns. If you spend too long killing mobs or getting XP in zones, then it's gonna take longer for you to clear the axe. Moreover, by getting too much XP, what ends up happening is that the zones you're going through and trying to get XP in become less efficient as the XP required for the next level is higher relative to a zone if you are over leveled for that zone. In other words, or to simplify, uh, essentially, you get more bang for your buck when you are lower than the zone level in terms of XP, and you get less bang for your buck when you are higher than the zone level in terms of XP. So, with those things in mind, let's talk about the XP breakpoints. So, in Act 1... Um, we're going to sort of, if you just want to know what you should be and not worry about anything else, this, these are the levels you sort of want to aim for. After this point, we're going to go into sort of more of, uh, explanation as to why you want to aim for these levels. Um, so let's start with this first one. By the time, like the first real XP checkpoint you're going to run into is sort of your mudflats XP. And... The reason why you want to pay attention to this is you want to get good enough XP to make sure by the time you return from sort of the mudflats and hail rake segment, you're level four. So you can equip Quicksilver Flask and get your movement skill online as soon as possible when you enter Submerge. So you don't have to worry about fiddling with that stuff uh, in Submerge, which can be a pretty big time loss 
if you don't hit four, because Submerge is already a complicated enough zone to sort of like move through accurately while you're trying to do inventory management and gem swaps. So by getting 3.75 in Mudflats, we position, position ourselves well to hit level four in Tidal Island before we go back for our first town, our uh, first major town, I should say. Um, this is obviously like a recommendation. You don't have to be right here. Sometimes you're gonna hit four. Sometimes you'll be 3.5. If you're below 3.5 leaving Mudflats, you're gonna run into a lot of trouble consistently hitting four by leaving Tidal Island. Tidal Island sometimes is kind of a scam. And part of the reason why I recommend 3.75 is I've had Tidal Islands where I literally only run into like five mobs, including Hail Rake. And so, if you're like three point, you know, like two five, there's no shot you're getting level four in Tidal Island, uh, unless you run across like Giga Mobs. Sometimes you do run across Giga Mobs in Tidal Island, but it's not as consistent. Additionally, Mud Flats, the XP rate at which you get is way better than it is in Coast and in Tidal Island, and the density is way better. The downside is is Roas are very 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 scary right so uh and of course you know you want to get through that zone relatively qu quickly too so typically if i'm around 3.75 um i feel great about my chances of hitting level four hail rake gives about 10 percent xp now he used to give a little more um but with the act one changes in 315 uh they reduce his xp somewhat so uh, usually you'll be able to get this sort of like last quarter of a level to four in Tidal Island with Hail Rake and the pack that's around him because he'll always come with a pack. Uh, but sometimes, like I said, leading up to him, you won't find a lot or, you know, his pack will be pretty small. So that's why we want to make sure we have this room to be able to hit level four. Now, this like next segment really is all about trying to get eight by the time you return to lower prison to go kill Brutus. Um, you don't have to be eight per se. If you're a caster, you definitely want to be eight so you can do your wand craft or scepter craft if you have enough uh, currency to be able to do so. It's because it's going to make Brutus a lot easier. So with that in mind, that's sort of like our overall goal. If you're playing like a bow character or a melee character, um, it's less important being eight, but as a general matter, if you're eight, you're gonna position yourself well to be able to hit the remaining XP breakpoints in act one. So this next segment that we have here, right, as I was talking about, once we get to Submerge, typically I like being somewhere between 4.75 and level five. By the time I'm leaving Submerge, it's really easy to do this for the most part because Submerged has a lot of like mob density when you actually find mobs. So uh, what I mean by that, right, is like there are a lot of tunnels in Submerged that are kind of sparsely populated with mobs. But like once those tunnels open up into a small open area, like they'll typically be a fair amount of mobs for you to just quickly uh, proc Onslaught with that will get you a nice chunk of XP as you progress. So this should be pretty reasonable. Uh, you want to make sure you're around level 7 as best as possible when you're leaving ledge. Uh, with the XP changes and sort of the health changes I mentioned in 3.15, uh, ledge became less good in terms of XP than it used to be, right? Um, prior to 3.15, it used to be like super easy to almost be like level 8 coming out of ledge in a reasonable amount of time. Now, if you were to try and get level eight, you would waste so much time in ledge um, compared to what you need. So here, level seven leaving ledge is really trying to make sure we get a good chunk of XP since ledge is XP dense while not spending too much time XP because that's one of the huge problems in ledge is that you might over XP and by over XP in ledge, sort of like your act one segment uh, to Brutus ends up being like pretty slow relative to what you might see speedrunner other speedrunners do. So, um, once I'm like level seven or a little over leaving ledge, uh, that's great. Um, I typically try and get about half a level and climb. So here I'll put it at 7.5. 
And then when I return to uh, Submerge and go through Flooded Depths to go to Dweller, you'll typically be able to pick up the last half level uh, fairly easily for uh, eight. And then it's great because once you get back to town, you can equip your level eight support and you can do a wand or scepter craft if you need to. Um, additionally, you know, it, you might be able to buy like certain new bases that might be useful for you uh, with the level eight breakpoint versus being level seven, say for, say for example. All right, in terms of leaving sort of the prison segment where you're killing Brutus, um, typically I like to be around like 9.25 to 9.5 uh, killing Brutus. Before uh, 3.15, this used to be level 10. Like you'd want to be right around level 10, maybe just shy of level 10. Um, but again, with the XP changes where sort of a lot of the X1, Act 1 XP got moved to sort of the back end of the act, um, it's a little harder now, uh, especially since the mobs are more tanky in lower and upper to get good XP. You'll still get pretty f fairly good XP, but again, um, this is a great breakpoint to aim for. So uh, this is probably the second most important breakpoint in this entire uh, sort of XP goals set, which is trying to get level 10 by the time you leave in Prisoner's Gate or early in Ship Graveyard. And the reason for this being is we want to equip our level 10 skill after killing Brutus. The faster we can equip it, the faster we'll be able to complete Act 1. I don't think it's worth it trying to get 10 in prison uh, because Prisoner's Gate is like a dream for XP because there are mobs that just clump up after you and chase after you. So getting sort of three-fourths of a level in Prisoner's Gate should be super easy. Um, the next segment we have here is 11.25, Leaving Fairgraves. So uh, this one, it can be a little tricky sometimes depending on how many mobs you clear in Ship Graveyard. Uh, because Ship Graveyard, right, there are mobs that you can't necessarily always see and plan around because they're submerged and they'll pop out of the ground. Um, typically, with the changes in 3.15 and sort of later, uh, the your ability to XP in Ship Graveyard is pretty good. In Ship Graveyard Arcade, you've, Cave, you pretty much just want to uh, get Onslaught procs, and that's it. Like, you're not really worried too much about... Uh, getting XP in the Ship Graveyard Cave. If you do the Fairgraves event, you'll get about half a level. So by the time you leave Fairgraves, right, essentially what this ends up equating out to is you'll get about half a level from Fairgraves. Um, and then you need to cover like the remaining sort of three fourths uh, that are left to get 11.25 from uh, two zones in Ship Graveyard and Ship Graveyard Cave. And then finally, uh, by the time you end up pathing to Mervel, you'd want to hit 12. Uh, the further you can get into 12, the better. Um, especially, you especially want to hit 12 if there is some critical 12 gem you want to use. Say, for example, like you're playing a Wintertide brand build or you're using Spectral Helix. Those are huge power spikes. Um, but the further you can get into 12, the better because it'll make your early XP in Act 2 uh a lot easier. So with that in mind, these are sort of like all the justifications or the reasons why we're aiming for these particular breakpoints. And if you are level 12, by the time you're exiting act one, you're going to be in really good position to have good XP management in act three or act two, excuse me. All right. Um, so one last final note, I probably should have mentioned this way earlier, but I'll mention in the description just to cover my bases, is that in Act 1, um, this sort of XP breakpoint list sort of presumes you're following the standard Act 1 pathing. Um, so if you're not following the standard Act 1 pathing, you know, like, you might want to just focus on sort of the the following breakpoints where it's like, you know, you're level 12 before Mervale, you're level 4 before leaving Tidal, and, you know, you're level 8 essentially by the time um, you're entering lower prison to progress to Brutus. Uh, those are, like, probably the main ones you want to focus on or, like, the three main XP goals, and then all the other ones are kind of just... The way you think about trying to hit those um, like incremental goals towards those breakpoints. All right. 
So thank you for watching and I hope this video was helpful.